Hey there, I'm Brittany Smith and welcome to Filmmaker Symposium. So today we're doing something a little bit different. You can see that I'm in a different location. It's in my messy garage, so you'll have to forgive the mess. But when you have a lot of interests, you have a messy garage. So today we're going to set up a green screen and I'm going to go over a few things that I've learned by experimenting with green screen and how to avoid mistakes and how to improve the quality of your green screen. So the first thing we need to do is actually set up our green screen and I'll be setting it up on a backdrop stand with my big humongous green screen cloth. Now normally you want this to be nice and flat. You can see I've folded it up and it's been folded up for at least a few weeks so it's probably going to be wrinkly and that's going to be a big thing we're going to talk about with green screen. You cannot have wrinkles in your cloth. So what I did a long time ago is I went through and ironed the whole thing, which took literally 45 minutes. It's, it was humongous and it just took forever and I had to use steam on my iron and it was just a really long process. So I'm going to show you how you don't need to use the iron. There are different ways that you can do this, but um, first we need to set it up. Okay, so I'm almost ready to raise the poles on my green screen. The only thing is before I do that, I want to make sure that my poles are as close to the cloth as possible. The reason why is I'm gonna have to clamp and tighten that fabric against the poles. So I wanna make sure that they're as close to the poles as possible. Now, this might be a little bit different depending on the green screen system you have purchased. If you've purchased one that has um, bands that are pulling the fabric to the pole, then you probably don't need to pay attention to this. But for me, I like to clamp mine to the poles, so I want my fabric to be as close to the poles as possible. And as you can see, there's a little bit of black pole left in that fabric, or beyond the fabric, so I'm going to take that pole and move it a little closer so that my backdrop is not so long. And there we have it. So now I'm ready to raise the poles. So I'm going to go ahead and raise those poles and I'll start clipping. Okay, so now I'm ready to start clipping to the poles. Now the one thing about clips, when you get a green screen kit, you'll probably get these clamps right here. I think this only came with three, which is definitely not enough for a green screen. So you definitely need like eight to, eight to 10 because you want this green screen to be tugged at every single point that it possibly could be tugged at. So I'm going to start flattening out the green screen. I might put something to flatten the green screen on the bottom so that as I'm clamping, I'm I'm actually flattening horizontally and vertically at the same time. Okay, so I've got my green screen all clamped down. I was going back and forth and making sure that I clamped even harder each time because I want to make sure that the green screen was as tight as it possibly could be. You want to make sure that your stands are not inching closer to each other. I was having a little bit of that problem. So if you have sandbags, make sure you get sandbags and try to pull those as tightly away from each other as possible. And you'll also notice that I put some weights at the bottom. So I've got lots of water down there. And the reason why I did that is because you want the green screen to be stretched out not only horizontally, but vertically as well. Now, if I were doing a whole body situation where I needed the floor, then I can put those weights behind and maybe fold that um, green screen a little bit, but it will be a little bit tricky if you're folding a green screen. So you want to make sure it's as smooth as possible. So the only other thing I need to do now is start lighting the green screen. So 
So the next step is now lighting the green screen. Now there's several things you have to watch out for when you're lighting the green screen. Many YouTube videos show just lighting the green screen and the subject at the same time. By subject, I mean the person. But I have found that you cannot light the person and the green screen with the same lighting. You need to have separate lighting going onto the green screen so that it's a nice, even, um, evenly lit setup. So that's the biggest thing with lighting a green screen is it has to be a very smooth, even lighting. And it actually doesn't matter how low light it is. It actually does matter how high the light is. But if you have kind of a lower light and it's covering the green screen evenly and you've got the same shade of green all over your screen, then you're in good shape. Now, there is such thing as lighting your green screen too much because if you light it too much, then that green light is gonna bounce off of it and then bounce on the back of your subject. So then you'll have like this green hue all over the person. Now there's several things that can create that green hue. I just explained the first one. But the second one is actually if you're standing too close to the green screen. So a lot of people, when they first start out, they'll stand like, this far and that's definitely way too close so you have to go a little bit further actually they people will recommend that you go 10 feet away from the green screen I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that while getting a good shot with the green screen so I'm gonna have to finagle a little bit but you can actually control that a little bit with your lighting setup so just make sure you have lower lighting on the green screen and then if you have any black absorbing type of fabrics like a black tablecloth or maybe even have the professional absorbent um, lighting material in your arsenal but anyway if you put the black on the side it'll absorb that green light so it doesn't get reflected back onto you now this is going to be a tricky thing because i actually have white walls in the garage and white is what reflects light very easily so if i'm videoing my green and then i go to edit and i see that there's a green hue then i know for sure that my white needs to be dealt with i probably need to put up some black tablecloth or black fabric of some kind so right now I'm going to start setting up my lights, which are actually adjustable. I can adjust them to warm lighting or cool lighting. And I, so what I'm going to do is set up two lights and then I'm also going to close this garage door. You can't see that the garage door is open, but I want to make sure that all that extra light that's going to distract is gone. So. Okay, so as you can see, I've lit my green screen, but I am really dark. The reason for this is I really wanna eliminate shadows on the green screen. So I've lit the green screen behind me first, and then I'm gonna light myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and step back and show you what it's gonna look like if I were to stand in front of the lighting. So you can see there's all kinds of shadows on the green screen. So there's all kinds of shadows on that green screen and we definitely don't want those shadows. So I'm gonna stay right here so that we can have the most optimal lighting. Now the thing is, I don't have a lot of lights. Um, as you know, I have two lights beside me. They're the newer brand lights and then a Home Depot light on the floor. And I think that will work, but now I don't have any lights for myself. So I've tried to get a little creative. I found a lantern in the house. It's kind of an emergency lantern. So I'm going to go and take that real quick. All right, so I'm going to put it on the brightest setting. I think this is way too exposed, but who knows, it might work. I'm going to lower it a little bit. Okay, so that's kind of a nice light right there. So this might be good for a, a scene in, a, in the dark woods at nighttime or something where someone's trying to f search for somebody or something like that. Um, the only thing is that if I had my footage, most likely 
I would have some moonlight in that footage. So optimally, I would want to make sure that right here in this garage, I would have some kind of moonlight hitting my head. So unfortunately, I don't have that light. I don't have the luxury of just having tons of lights. But um, if I did, I would probably set one up and just have that kind of beaming a little bit on my head. So, but for now, we'll just settle for this. Now, if I wanted to do something super evil, could do something like, I don't know, maybe a Star Wars sort of tunnel or something that would kind of be fitting. And then there's this one that looks kind of like modern evil, I guess. But anyhow, for now, I think I'll just use this light and see if it can work in my film editing. So that's all I have for today, but stay tuned because this whole green screen thing is not over. So next week, I'm gonna be talking about editing and how to do some of this in After Effects or Premiere Pro and um, some of the ways that you can fix the problems that come, come along with green screen. Hopefully there's no green on me, on my shoulders or anything, but stay tuned because I wanna see you next time and it's gonna be super fun.